Emmy, coffee, anyone, welcome. Hi, Richard. Thanks for having me on. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for sharing your time this afternoon. So for a little bit of context, we've known each other for some time through LinkedIn, but it turns out that we're both part of a, a running club called DSD. So a massive shout out to all the DSD, the Dundrum South Dublin Woo! Athletic Club. <laughs> so in the last couple of days, I spotted you doing something really interesting on LinkedIn. And basically you made a little video of yourself uh, doing press ups and you decided to turn it into the press up challenge. And I think that's really great just to, to see people taking exercise full stop, even better to see people encouraging others to take exercise. But, you know, the incredible thing here is that you have actually managed to scale this uh, from an idea into a project and you are looking to support the mental health of our frontline medics here in Ireland via this project. Yeah, I mean, I was sitting here on my couch on Monday, the day for Paddy's Day, and um, originally I had been complaining about my local gym because they hadn't kind of closed their doors uh, given the situation. And I, I know at that particular time it was still confusing to a lot of people, but I just couldn't understand why they were going to charge me freezing fees when I had concerns of going to the gym and just taking responsibility not to go into an environment like that just in case I spread anything or got anything. So um, it originally kind of stemmed from that. I asked other people, you know, what's the story with your gyms? What are they doing? And I kind of from that, I I kind of just, you know, put up a post then as well just to say like, you know, you know, thank you to all our health workers who are kind of facing this at the moment and just kind of gave a shout out to them. I mean, I have a lot of friends and even family members who are healthcare workers. My uncle is in the National Ambulance Service. So I actually got in touch with him on the back of that just to kind of query him on, um, you know, what I could potentially do. Um, for me at the time, have, I, having done a bit of research, obviously recognised that how important ventilators were to this whole crisis and honestly the lack of them here in Ireland having kind of gone through different annual reports from different different um, national bodies that would um, look at our health system and in recognition of that I decided I have to do something I can't just sit here there has to be something that I can do something that I can take from my past experience to try and kind of create awareness promote fitness and keeping healthy and mentally kind of focused if you're in self-isolation, but also trying to raise funds for for ICUs as well. But at that particular time, it was just a generic campaign in the sense of I just knew that I wanted to start up a, a campaign of sorts, kind of taking inspiration from the Ice Bucket Challenge in ways to try and make it kind of go viral, but also, you know, um, for it to kind of, uh, you know, be be something that that you know young people will pick up on on social media um as well so that's how the campaign started up but then i i actually got introduced to the mercy hospital in cork by a journalist called neve griffin which was a great help as well so i got talking to them and um it was just very eye-opening eye what i i heard from from them it's very interesting that you talk about the ventilators because for sure there's a huge issue with supply but i understand you've pivoted then from raising money for respirators to and I, i'm going to let you explain what your goal now is what to use the funds to support yeah so i'm just going back to michael sheridan from mercy hospital foundation i had an opportunity to speak with him and it gave me substantial insight really with regards to really what's needed by the ICUs and the healthcare workers you know obviously on the one hand ventilators are extremely important I mean we are going to need more critical beds we're going to need more ventilators that's very obvious and it's a need that needs to be met I think though from my conversation with Michal he touched on a very important point which was healthcare workers and their mental health he provided me an example which was there is say one psychiatrist in the hospital the psychiatrist is actually specific to cancer patients and, and supporting them. And they have gotten to a point where they've had to actually bring in the psychiatrist to speak with medical staff. I was just left aghast by that. And then also with the very fact that there are already queues out the door, supposedly. So, it you know, given my personal experiences around mental health and then also learning that, I just thought this, this is very important and something that people need to know about and if I can do this push-up challenge and, and have this campaign and have that attached to it it would just be phenomenal and not only that but the funds are going to go to to equipment as well like the government have measures in place to obviously support hospitals but it, it's when that equipment actually runs out 
Um, it's their protective gear as well. That's something else that we need to to always be you know aware of too. So that's essentially um, how the campaign has kind of pivoted from ventilators specifically to the mental health of healthcare staff and then also just other ICU equipment like protective gear. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the figures then. When did you start the project and what kind of uh, goals did you set in place in terms of timelines and in terms of figures you wanted to raise? Yeah, I mean, um, it was a Monday night day for Paddy's Day. I stayed up till about 6 a.m. trying to come up with something. I was like, I just need to come up with something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to stay up all night until I figure this out. And I did. So this is something that didn't sort of happen by accident you really put a lot of intelligence into this. So what motivated you to suddenly desire to help out? If we go back to World War II or World War I and you'd hear about people would be volunteering and they want to play their part. And it really feels like there's, there's a degree of solidarity that we are seeing during this current crisis that is very much in line with the kind of solidarity and the kind of desire to support our front lines that people would have usually had on a wartime footing. Yeah, most definitely. And I think I'd probably attribute that to a number of things. I guess in, in some sense the word, like from a professional point of view and then also a personal point of view, professionally speaking, I've had an opportunity to actually work with a humanitarian organization called UNICEF. So, oh, wow. you know, yeah, it's an organization that obviously that supports um, children worldwide. We're like, well, sorry, we're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still talking as if I'm still there, but that just goes to show you just how passionate I am about the organization. But I've had an opportunity to actually visit um a country that was post an epidemic so I visited Sierra Leone last year and I was very fortunate to be able to go to certain uh, communities and, and learn about how they coped with the epidemic there um, and it was just truly eye-opening and in that particular epidemic we saw healthcare workers travel to to um, Western Africa to Sierra Leone and, and other countries um, to try and contain this um, so from that respect, I would have had an awful lot of insight as to dealing with an epidemic. Is that um, the Ebola epidemic? It was the Ebola epidemic, yeah. Similar then in, in terms of dealing with infectious disease control. And the most important thing is to try and stop the spread and to try and track it. So on that note, then there would have been a lot of challenges in terms of the logistics and then also on the, the mental traumas that people would have had to cope with on a, on a day to day basis. Yeah, most definitely. And um, I think that it's it's something that we may not necessarily think of um i mean if if i just go back to to kind of what was shared with me by by Michal and the foundation it, it's that you know what kind of occurred to me was we need to make sure that we don't underperform against this virus we can't afford to underperform against this virus and that's what i saw in sierra leone like years later but i i recognized just how important it was to contain this and it, it's the same here we need to contain it and, and do you think is that putting when you use the words perform i'm just wondering is it that it's actually also creating a lot of pressure on people that that people feel that it's it's their performance that's going to be mission critical to this control and is that putting perhaps a, a lot of extra burdens and pressure on people and their mental health oh definitely i mean god like a uh, health worker is like me or you you know, if we were under a crisis situation like this and forced into a situation that was occurring at such an intensity that you've never experienced before, of course you're going to be stressed. And I, I think that's why um, I, I'm so delighted that that Michal was able to share something like that with me and that I came, I was able to kind of learn that um, because it wasn't something that initially occurred to me. But in terms of sustaining a response and trying to contain COVID-19, we are going. We're, we need to ensure that our healthcare workers are are mentally um, okay and um, are, are able to talk about what happens day to day to somebody. Um, they just need that. So back to the numbers, you're approximately 14 days into the project or thereabouts. Did you originally intend to have a sort of a finite goal? And where are you at now? Uh, have you iterated or, or has the... I suppose the reaction you've got uh, influenced you to to maybe kick the project on for longer, keep it running for longer. Yeah, well, when I initially like set up the campaign, I it was I I I, I felt that this was going to be just a one day thing on Paddy's Day, so I had originally called oh, it the wow. Paddy, 
push-up challenge so that's why the url link on gofundme is paddy push-up challenge and i can't change it and um, gofundme won't let me change it but um it was meant to be just a, a one day campaign i just thought because everyone was going to be at home it's something that everybody could do on paddy's day so that's where it all came from and um i at that point hadn't actually had a, a conversation with um either of the hospitals and um i i didn't have i mean substantial targets in terms of numbers or in terms of funds to raise um i just knew that i wanted to create some awareness and see if i could do get some money donated to to certain hospitals and i think after having the conversation i had with the hospitals and kind of other people who were who follow me on like instagram and stuff they were like willing to help me and put me in touch with iradio and different things like that so i think just from those couple of conversations that occurred after the Paddy push-up challenge, it's kind of turned into a wider campaign. So it's it's definitely something that it needs to be, I think, sustained now alongside the length of time it'll take to get over this. So That's incredible. And with your own uh, personal experiences to date, you actually have a lot of experience to enable you to, you know, to really keep this running and to get you done. <laughs> I mean, uh, to to a certain level. I mean, I, I I wouldn't have experience necessarily doing a lot of media related stuff. So it's been a it's been quite a, a ride this this week. Anyway, speaking to different radio stations and whatnot. So it's been a bit of a learning curve in that sense. Um, as well as that, it's social media. Like obviously, I I, I use it day to day. But from a fundraising perspective, like my original position in, in UNICEF was corporate fundraising and corporate partnerships. So it was a little bit different to what I'm doing now, but there are definitely like different skills that I can take from that, that I've applied to to this. And um, I'm lucky enough in the sense that because of the different um, companies I've been with over the years and organizations, I've quite a big network uh, of people that I can tap into as well. That's really exciting. And it's, it's very much about that network effect. And uh, years ago, they talked about business to business and business to consumer. But it's quite interesting with uh, LinkedIn that it was supposed to be for business, but people are using it to a degree socially as well to share certain topics that wouldn't necessarily be directly aligned to business. Like, for example, arguably, this isn't a business goal, but it could become a business goal. And could you see any scenario where by you would try and, and scale this project further or what are your thoughts and ambitions? Honestly, I've been trying to just focus day to day on what I can do because um, I, I do have a full time job working at Ad Salesforce, which keeps me very, very busy. But um, in terms of the campaign itself, I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think things like this, like a push up challenge, for instance, it's um, one of those things that only sustains for X amount of time but it's not lost on me what the purpose behind this is. And it's not to say that I won't continue trying to support the hospitals in another way if I can. I mean, I've, I've other, I've actually other ideas that have come up in the last couple of days. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to just see how this goes first and what I can do. Um, and, and it, it, this is almost, a, you know, kind of a test. It's kind of like, um, like technology or anything else. It's like, you need to test things first and, and then pivot if, if need be. So um, at the moment, like we, we're near enough to about 3000 euros, which is great. Like wow. I, I, uh, I, like I know that like, like an idea, a, a tiny video that you stuck up on the internet, 3000 euros to, to go to supporting our frontline medical staff. That's, that's really exciting. Yeah, no, it is. And uh, we need more of it. So if anybody's watching this, then please donate. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, look, the two officers are going to need about a hundred grand, and I'd I'd love to be able to get to the stage where myself and all the people involved have been able to collectively contribute that sort of money. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, it's 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 quite a challenge trying to balance um balance work and this at the same time. But it, it's something I'm completely dedicated to, and I mean, um, I, I'm committed to it. And um, now's the time to act. I think is is what I'm trying to say. We can afford not to act, and I think that's kind of the basis of why I've, I'm I'm here, and this is why I'm doing it. I think you've absolutely nailed it. That we're very much dealing with things on a day to day basis and trying to be proactive as much as possible. And in some cases, the reality of it is that if we can just stay at home, uh, we we can be playing our part. But in other cases, if it is possible 
uh, to do a little bit more like you've done. It's it's really exciting. And, uh, you know, thank you very much. We, we need more people to be proactive like this and to be thinking about how can I help and how can I leverage my skills and networks? And that's really, really exciting. Yeah. And I think as well, like some of the different things I've been hearing as well is that, you know, certain people, they really, really want to help. But for whatever reasons, given their circumstances or family situation, they may not be able to. And and this is kind of what like this is what's been regurgitated back to me. I think people feel like just by doing this small thing um, online and then nominating a few people, it's kind of just sending a message out, number one. Um, it's kind of getting them to do something fun as well like kind of, that's the base of it all it's keeping it fun keeping it light but also realizing that it goes somewhere somewhere good and um, yeah I mean I, I think that uh, I think if, if if this makes people think that they're doing something that like god like I've achieved something um, in that sense as well that's really awesome Emmy you're an absolute inspiration thanks so much for your time and before we sign off just remember or remind us rather where we can get involved and and what kind of help you might need uh where this project to scale a little bit more into the future yeah so um all you got to do is just see how many push-ups you can do or something else like i don't know grab a pack of cavalry mini rolls like my grandmother and stick them over your head <laughs> um i awesome. by no means limiting anybody you can get creative with this like my mother uh she she got she got a, a broomstick and toilet roll a luxury item right now and stuck them at either end of the of the brush and to be fair though that's a very good tip if, you, if you're that. sitting at home and you're saying i don't have any exercise equipment i mean a broomstick could be three four hundred grams for our moms that's that's a perfect barbell weight that's awesome it's, it, it's not a push-up but it's something <laughs> so the main what thing I is get involved keep yourself fit and healthy that's that's uh that's mission yeah. critical as well we're, we're actually we should probably remind people we can all play our part by looking after ourselves there's no selfishness in that oh there there isn't and like i mean if you don't look after yourself you can't help anyone else and that's actually quite a a learning curve for me over the years because I just tend to like just try help someone or whatever and then I kind of forget about myself but uh no it's definitely it's definitely it definitely rings true in this sense but um yeah in order to just like jump in on the campaign and and, and support it all you got to do is, is that like just try see any push-ups or whatever else you can do and um, nominate a couple of other people to do the same and share it online um, and tag the matter foundation and the mercy hospital and um and also you know hashtag the push-up challenge i or e and they can go to the GoFundMe page, which is uh, gofundme.com slash push up. We'll link below. Awesome. So people can click through and get involved click straight away. That link. Click that link. Awesome. <laughs> Emmy, you're an inspiration. Thanks so much for your time. And thanks so much also for putting yourself forward to contribute like this. You might say it's in a small way. I think it's huge because of the potential for influencing and encouraging others to get involved and to look after themselves is, is a huge message as well. It's very important to to remind everyone of the importance of staying home, washing the hands, keeping safe and looking after their mental health. Yeah, and social distancing. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Emmy. Thanks, Richard. Brilliant.